Hey there everyone, Hitesh here, back again with another video, and of course with a better throat. I've been suffering from a really really bad throat for a while, but things are all okay, so thank you so much for all the amazing messages at Instagram. And now since my throat is good enough, uh, let's talk about something on JavaScript as a little bit on to the React. <music> Let me first address who is the target audience for this video because without target audience definition this would be this video wouldn't be much more fruitful. You would be looking for a laugh or maybe a cat video. That's not this video. So my target audience for this video is somebody who is not only just familiar with JavaScript but also is a little bit familiar with the React. I will be telling you a specific use case of Axios which is going to be really helpful. The reason for making this video is that recently we have been working on a startup. I am handling a team there and there are a few beginners or freshers in the team. And they got into a specific use case scenario, which I'm going to tell you in later on. And I thought this is really important to discuss on the YouTube that what's the difference between a regular app or a tutorial app that you see around versus a special use case scenario in the production level. Now, I don't blame any instructor or any tutorial for not discussing this because to be honest, they shouldn't be discussing that. I, I never discuss that in my courses or tutorial. But these things are going to help you to understand that why production apps are a little bit more polished. Now with this, I would also like to address that in this tutorial, I will create a specific use case scenario. Of course, all the code files are going to be available, but I'll be using absolute basics of React for that. I won't be using use state. I won't be using use effect hook, although you can and make this application much more optimized, but that is not the goal for this application. I want to tell you a specific use case scenario and based on this, you are going to learn something new. So if you have patience, then only stick around. I promise you this is going to be super helpful for you and you're going to become a little better coder from last day. That's all the goal for this small video is. With this, let me explain you this use case scenario and let me first take you to my computer and walk you through over this. Okay, so if you have made it so far, I'm pretty sure you got enough of patience up here. Now, from this point onwards, there are going to be little code, more talk, but it's going to be very fruitful talk. So let me walk you through with the scenario that we have right now. I have created a small React app. This does basically nothing, just a fresh React app. And as you can see from this logo that it's nothing has been done. Now, let me walk you through with the scenario. I cannot actually replicate the exact scenario and can, or can discuss that, but I will show you what exactly happened in that startup and what the founder wanted us to do and what that fresher did, which was not too much accurate. Okay, so as you notice that every product is going to have a search bar and these search bar, my ideal use case scenario or my recommendation to people is that first let the people type what they actually want to type. So in this case, if I just go ahead and type react, and then I go ahead, either hit a search button or an enter. It makes a query onto the server and whoever the course is going to use the title React is going to come up here and you can just go ahead and search for all of them. This is, in my case, is the best place scenario. But since due to some Google suggestions and everything, a lot of people like to do in this way as well that we do on our blog. So if I click on the search icon, let's just say I want to search for Vagrant. As soon as I start typing, it just keeps on sending a request on the server, asking for some questions and getting some response. As I type VA, it thinks that I'm looking for variable, but I'm looking for Vagrant and I type as soon as G, it has already made three requests to the server. Now, in some cases, it makes sense to have an extra load on the server, but my recommendation still is let user type and then hit and enter. Now, exact same case scenario happened on our product as well, that the founder wanted us to implement exactly this scenario, not the submit button. So we said, okay, and it was a pretty easy thing to do. A simple Axios request was to made, handle the response, and pretty much that's it. But since this task was assigned to a fresher, a beginner, that's why he did something which was not very much optimized. And I taught him that how you can make such things a little bit more optimized. And let me walk you through with that scenario as well. So let's just say we have a simple, this is kind of a mimicking a response from the server. As soon as I hit localhost 4000 slash courses, it gives me an array of courses, of course, fictitious one, ID zero and name react and stuff and stuff like that. Now, as soon as I hit a reload, this one actually takes a minute to just mimic that sometimes 
the server response can be delayed. Not only that, this actually can go ahead and you can put a question mark and say Q equals uh, react and then it's going to search into this small array take a minute again and it's going to give you a response back of react.js that hey i was able to find that now let's just say you want to make a search application in the react for this exact same scenario so how a typical user is going to do it and how you can make it a little bit more optimized that's all this video is going to be about so let's go ahead and come up on to the code part as i told you this is the basic application that we are going to have the first thing is to install axios and in case you don't know how to do that it's a pretty simple one all you have to do is simply say npm install axios and pretty powerful library that you can go ahead and install that mine is already installed so i'm not going to run this command but feel free to run this one on a fresh react application and then i'm going to simply say npm start to start my react application and that's exactly what we have seen uh, just a minute ago up here that this is my application. Come on, it's going to take some time. Okay, so finally it took some time, even the bare React application, but it took us some time. Okay, so how we're going to do that is let's go up here onto the app.js. We are going to go ahead and remove everything and we're going to just generate a React functional component. Uh, so React functional component, so that is all basics fine. And let's go ahead, since we are about to use Axios, let's go ahead and say that, hey, I want to use Axios. That obviously is gonna coming up from Axios. That's nice and easy. In the div, my recommendation is always and always go ahead and test something so that we know that uh, whatever we have written is actually working. So that shouldn't take much of the time. There we go, nice and easy. Now let's go ahead and create a simple search box here. We won't be making it too much stylish, but just a simple search box. Okay, I want to make this div a little bit stylish here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a little bit liberty to add a little bit more style. Nothing much. We are gonna simply say a margin, margin top. And that's gonna be a little bit more so that we can see everything onto the center-ish. So we're gonna say 4M and let's also have text align to be center. This is not gonna affect anything. This is just to make sure that you see everything clearly and properly in the center. We're gonna go ahead and have a simple input tag and we're gonna put some of the property on these input tags. Uh, I'm not worried about anything border or anything that you can do all these stylings later on. The first thing that we are gonna simply have is going to be what type of this is going to be. Simple text is good enough for us just for fun let's have a placeholder as well and we're gonna say enter search and most importantly usually we have a button and on the button we hit on submit and all of that since we are running the things as soon as user types so we're gonna go ahead and say that on change now who is going to handle this on change I'm, I'm gonna say that a method that will say uh, on on type or anything like that is going to handle all of this now let's go up here and define this method as well. So we're going to simply say that on type, and that's going to be a really simple one, just like that. So this is going to handle the on type kind of a scenario, but we also know that this is going to receive an event. Uh, we're going to just handle this in a second. First, let's see how our application is looking like. And seems like we are having some of the issues, margin top and text align, my bad should be all okay now okay not really the most beautiful scenario here but this is what we have got and i can go ahead and type that now i'm not going to use use state i'm not going to use use effect i will discuss that but i'm not going to use that i don't want to make this tutorial any more complicated now what i want to do is i want to mimic this request so anybody who types anything into this search box I want to convert that into this specific URL. So I've copied this URL, whatever the URL is, localhost 4000 or any other URL that you are having. Let's go ahead and try to make a request on this one. We can close this one to have more real estate on the screen. Okay, first let me take whatever the user is typing. Since this is filling up, this can be actually taken up in the event. So I'm gonna just take it directly without storing that in the state. I know this is bothering you. So we're gonna simply say, we're gonna simply say, a search and that search is going to be handled by event dot target dot whatever the value he is typing so now i have this search keyword now how we're going to make this search it's really really simple 
we are going to make an Axios request. So I'm going to go ahead and say, hey, Axios, please go ahead and fire up a GET request. And where do you want to make this GET request? I'm going to use backticks and I'm going to go ahead like this. Now, previously it was having a courses query equals to React. Instead of the React, I'm going to insert a variable. So dollar sign just like that. There we go. And I'm going to use the search term here. So that makes it absolutely easy. This is a really classic basic one. Now, since this is going to be a request and we have simulated a one, uh, one, min one second of delay, it makes sense to have an await and we're going to store this result. So we're going to simply say const result that is going to be stored up here. And once this is all done, I don't want to do anything. I just want to do a console table of this result. And since in case you have handled any kind of web, re web request or these kinds of API request calls in the past, you know that everything comes in the data. So I'm going to just directly just dump up everything result.data. Absolutely basics. There is nothing too much going on here. So let's go ahead and see that how this is going to work. Let's go ahead and work on with this. And uh, here's my React app. And uh, why are you having an? Okay. So we haven't actually made it asynchronous. So let's go ahead and make this one a, a simple kind of asynchronous here. Come on, a couple of mistakes. Hopefully, oh my goodness, too many errors. So let's go ahead and hit a reload. And there we go. Now it's much more better. Let's go ahead and open the console and see that what is happening up here. So as soon as I try to make a React, you might have noticed that we are sending off too many requests up here and all of the request is giving me, I hope you can understand that how many requests we have made a call on this one. And every single time I'm not even waiting and I'm firing up the request, probably user want to find something and all of that. And this eventually is going to turn a congestion in your network and eventually your server is going to face a load and you're not going to get a performance which you are really requiring from a React side of thing. So what is the answer of this situation? In case you are now able to understand, ah, uh, that's a problem a little bit here. Okay, let me tell you about the, uh, the answer or the solution of this one. The solution of this one is cancel token. And there is a lot of debate how this cancel token can be applied or can be used as well. Let me give you one basics one and then I'm gonna tell you that how you can optimize more on this cancel token and what are the problems in this situation you are going to see everybody calls this as cancel token because that's what the documentation of Axios actually tells you. First, you go ahead and make a simple cancel token here. Just is just a variable, nothing much more. Once you have taken the search, then you make a check that whether this cancel token is active, you are having an active request, which you need to cancel out first and then make a new request or something like this. So in that case, what we do actually is we go ahead and simply use a simple if case scenario. So we're going to go ahead and say if the type of cancel, I'm going to go ahead and copy this before making any typo. If the type of cancel token is not equals to type of undefined, so if the cancel token is uh, not undefined, then what you do is you go ahead, use cancel token and you simply call a method that is cancel. And obviously you might be saying that, okay, wait a minute from where this cancel is coming up from that I'm going to tell you in a second. And we are going to simply say canceling the previous request. Okay, that's it. Now this cancel token as of now, at least at least of this code doesn't make sense. Why? Because this cancel token is not being created yet. This cancel token actually go ahead, you need to create it up here. So we're going to go ahead and paste this one. So cancel token is actually created from Axios. And in fact, all the requesting such library allows you to have this cancel token. So we have this cancel token and then we go ahead and say dot source. Uh, there's a lot more you can study in the documentation, but to be honest, you don't need too much to study on this one. And that's it. This is how you create a cancel token. Most important thing, whenever you are making a web request and you want to cancel the previous request based on this cancel token, then you pass on just one more parameter here. You go ahead, put up a comma, you put up a pair of uh, parentheses here and you simply go ahead and say, hey, there's a cancel token available here that is stored in the cancel token dot token. That's all you have to do. 
Now what this is going to do, this is going to make a web request onto this URL. And as soon as a user again comes up and makes a request on the same URL or uses the same request, and there is a previous request which is still pending, it's gonna go ahead and cancel that previous request, removing traffic from your network, and will make another request, a fresh request which you are looking up for. That is how you do a little bit more optimization. Now let me go ahead and save this one. You're not going to see too much of the difference here, but let me just go ahead and clear this up and hit a reload just for the basics one here. Now if I type up React pretty quickly, you can see that all of the requests got canceled. That means my server is not getting an extra load. And on top of that, I'm getting this response, which I'm supposed to get from my server. So that actually makes sense. Now, a couple of caveats here. This code has still a couple of issues, which if you have watched my JavaScript series, you are gonna be pretty comfortable by spotting them. The first thing is, we're storing this cancel token in just a variable. So eventually the thing is going to happen that there's gonna be nothing inside this cancel token and your JavaScript engine is gonna think like, hey, uh, there is no reference of this variable. There is nothing going on in here. So garbage collection can collect this one. So that is going to be an issue. Now, apart from this, if you don't store it up here and you use something more like hooks, which is a little bit advanced topic for this small basic tutorial, I'll discuss that probably later on. You can store that in some kind of a state and then manipulate it. Of course, that's going to be a better approach. Another thing that you might be, that might be bothering you a little bit, that instead of using this on change up here, probably you can use use effect hook. But again, my point, I wanted to make this tutorial absolute basic and wanted to show you that what impact does it make and how you can make a coding a little bit more optimized by smaller things and make your product a little bit more better. So next time, whenever you are doing a production ready application and you are having something a similar situation, then you can just go ahead and use this cancel token. There is a lot more in the documentation of Axios about this cancel token. It's not really a too much talked thing over the internet, but I think you get the point what I wanted to really say in this video. Okay, so I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have enjoyed it, make sure you hit that subscribe button or consider it later on as well. No problem with that. Now, of course, I have a few videos which are already lined up and I wanted to make them for a really, really long time. Now I have got some free time. Throat is also good. So expect more videos in the upcoming few months on the regular basis. But again, bell notification is something which is exactly for a guy like me who uploads on any random day. So I hope you are enjoying this. Make sure you hit that like button as well. And definitely don't forget to catch me up on Instagram as well. And I'm going to catch you up with more such awesome videos. Catch you up in the next one. Every time.